thanks a lot. Uh, hi guys, uh, my name is Anastasia uh, Osichkina. Uh, currently, I'm working as lead 3D environment artist at my games. Uh, okay, a bit about my background and about where uh, I worked already. Uh, my uh, career in game dev started from mobile games. Uh, and uh, I was there like, I think for four years, uh, mostly I was doing like backgrounds. So it wasn't exactly like real time environment art. It was mostly rendering. Uh, so yeah, I have some experience with V-Ray, for example. Uh, and besides that, uh, pretty much same time, I was doing some freelance work for Ubisoft Paris Mobile, uh, also for backgrounds, uh, visual novel stuff. Uh, later, after that, I uh, got some experience from uh, CG My Academy uh, uh, and uh, started my, let's say, journey to uh, real-time uh, environment art. Mm. First, uh, my first, I think, uh, like course was intro to environment art in general, and I was lucky to have an amazing teacher there, uh, Steven Hong. Uh, and uh, later I started working on my other stuff. Uh, after that course, uh, I was hired at JAMA Games as an experienced environment artist and did some work there. Later, uh, I unfortunately uh, was uh, le left JAMA Games and currently I am at my games. So it's, uh, it's pretty much all. Uh, also wanted to say, sorry, I'm not a native speaker, so mistakes will be made. Uh, and uh, let's continue. Let's uh, look a bit at my portfolio. Uh, so uh, today's workshop, uh, we mostly will be talking about my uh, last project, Starlight Manor. Uh, most of the questions were about this project uh, and uh, that's why most of the workshop will, will be talking about that. Uh, here is it. Uh, so a bit uh, overview of this project. Uh, what was my goals, uh, what I was uh, hoping to achieve with this project and if everything like, like went well. And uh, we'll be talking more about uh, reference gathering for this project and after that we will be speaking about uh, uh, questions you asked. So about this project, uh, most of all my goal for this uh, environment was uh, to uh, create an uh, interior uh, heavily dependent on tiles, trims and reuse of, say, uh, reuse of same textures and assets. It should be a bit decayed, but uh, not too much, more like a dusty view, maybe um, some leaks, uh, but uh, no heavy uh, damages uh, to environment was done. Mm, the idea was to make some kind of space for major sorceries, witches maybe, some academia vibes, uh, and main idea was that I wanted to separate um, whole environment in a uh, several like spaces. Uh, this one front uh, corridor is like a, a day zone. It uh, lighted with uh, uh, sunny, warm colors. Uh, it has like a day sky on top. And the end of the corridor uh, was going to be like a um, round night zone with a big window on top with the moonlight, uh, bluish stuff and everything connected with night. Uh, mostly my inspiration was Final Fantasy XIV, uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, and uh, some concept art from uh, Beauty and the Beast movie. Uh, I'll show you my reference board in a second. There it is. So here is a uh, concept art for Beauty and the Beast by Carl Simon. I am in love with this concept art. I really like how uh, everything is connected, like a blue sky and everything so gold, shiny, and uh, balance of colors is amazing. So I decided to go with this like my main reference. Mm. A bit about how I got the reference for projects. It uh, depends on project uh, because, for example, for my previous project, uh, Life on Water, 
securities. I will show you reference board a bit later. Uh, there was a kind of one type of gathering reference, uh, but this time I decided to go uh, with working around props I needed to do and with working uh, around style I wanted to achieve. Uh, one of my favorite styles of games is Dishonored. Uh, I'm in love with their paintish like textures, how they approach stuff. And so most of my reference uh, was from there. Mm. It's uh, more about how I treat textures, streams, and other stuff. Uh, other than that, I got that reference for my kind of hero asset, I can say, because it uh, took most of the time and most of questions was about this asset. Uh, here is a reference for uh, Chandelier, uh, how it was made in the order. I'll try to look closer and try to replicate some kind of stuff from here. Uh, and other uh, pretty important assets is frames, uh, how to treat architecture of the whole stuff, corridor, uh, how to treat light. Here's some reference from Diablo. Uh, here's a reference from Dragon Age Inquisition and other small assets. Uh, so this time uh, I treated assets like props, uh, colors and treatment of textures. Uh, I didn't like. I didn't need a lot of, I think, reference because I think this is uh, like qu quite a small amount of references. But it was enough uh, to finish my environment. Uh, also, as uh, like to compare with my previous uh, references for uh, my previous environment, life on water. Uh, here it was uh, more like in blocks. Mm, medium, small, large assets, a big bl block about uh, color scheme, about lighting, and uh, a lot of reference from games. Uh, because until the end, I wasn't sure what uh, game uh, should I like aim for style. Uh, mostly I was aiming here for Apex style. Uh, so here it is. Uh, and later I will talk about, there was a question about how not to be overwhelmed by big environments. I will speak based on this reference board later about that. Okay, so uh, back to our workshop. Uh, so plan for, his, uh, for this workshop is, uh, now we'll be focusing on answering your questions we'll be making breakdown of crystals of chandelier. Uh, later, we'll be doing a small demo how to sculpt ornament, uh, and I will show you how I, uh, how my scone uh, look like uh, in this brush. Uh, also, there was a question about how books was made, about texturing and set up in Unreal Engine, uh, how uh, we achieving like painter style of ceiling and art in hallway, and about light. And the other block is like a general Q&A block. Um, also, we'll be answering some questions. I won't, I won't read them right now, but uh, so let's continue. So making chandelier crystals. Mm. Uh, here I prepared some stuff uh, and there will be kind of several ways how we can make them. Uh, my uh, initial uh, asset is Kinda high poly. I can say that it's very optimized, uh, to be honest. So yeah, it has insane amount of polygons, and uh, it's mostly because I needed crystals to be uh, good looking for um, where uh, for close ups. So I mostly focused on uh, doing them the most uh, like volumetric, uh, shiny, in different angles of light. So let me open it with a second. So here it is. Uh, the secret is that I didn't set up crystals as glass. I set up uh, them as metallic stuff. So uh, my initial stuff was like uh, a small uh, geosphere with backs uh, deleted from behind because uh, mostly we didn't see like backs of it we only see fronts so uh, 
it was like that it's like a small geosphere with uh, facets on it uh, baked uh, without uh, like chamfers of course uh, but there are several other ways that are uh, far more optimized how we can uh, make them and uh, it will be kind of the same not as good as for close-ups but uh, still workable so uh, first of all uh, i decided to go with uh, some kind of atlas and uh, bake everything on plane here it is i prepared this very like uh, simple fast made stuff uh, We'll be having like crystals itself, a uh, small um, like uh, thread that they, they're hanging on. And also I made a separate thread also for baking and separate crystals. Uh, here it is, already baked and ready. Uh, how, uh, well, I think every, everyone knows how to bake stuff in Substance Designer, but just in case, I will do a, a quick like demo for that. Uh, we are adding like pla plain it's same uh, process as we are baking for example foliage on atlas uh, add, uh, we are adding a plane to bake on and we are adding our high poly uh, that are crystals mm. oh, it's pretty much all maps I made I mean it's like overdue we don't need all of them but just in case uh, high poly model uh, and low poly. Let's start. Here it is. Uh, most of all, I needed normal from here, opacity and color map. Uh, so with a uh, color map, uh, we we are doing a mask. Well, here I need like kind of only one mask uh, to separate crystal color from a uh, thread color. And doing very simple uh, setup. Uh, there is like no uh, noise here, just uh, simple uniform colors. I mean, you always can go uh, further with it. Uh, you can add noise, for example, for my original crystal that are like volumetric, they have some, some kind of noise, uh, roughness information, and other stuff. But for this, I went a bit simpler. So here uh, we are doing a simple base color for crystals. We are using our normal, uh, just for fun, I added some kind of uh, normal info for threads just to make them more interesting. Here, how it looks, I'm doing stuff with style sampler, just a uh, simple bell shape uh, with uh, size changes here, you can do that just to imitate uh, shape on threads. And here we're doing some transformations, moving it where we need, and using mask, we are blending it here. Getting normal, normal combined, and here is it, our final stuff. Uh, roughness is also very simple. Uh, for crystals to kind of imitate a uh, glass texture, you need it to be uh, as reflective as you can. Like, uh, so it's almost black, but uh, not exactly. And also um, for metallic, it's also not exactly white. Yeah, it's not a real PBR, mm, and sometimes you need to cheat. So uh, metallic is also not exactly white. It's a bit grayish. Uh, let me see. I don't remember what exactly. I uh, 250. Uh, this ambient occlusion height we don't need. Uh, opacity is the same as we baked it. Here it is. And final textures. Let's see. Mm. So. Uh, We are having a. Uh, we'll do it like this to to be it more visible with normal map. Uh, here we get an atlas. So what I did, I'm cutting it like as usual, like you're doing for foliage, for example, doing a thread and this stuff, for example, we can separate pieces. 
So the thread, of course, if you're going for this uh, chandelier, I needed to bend it. So, of course, I made in like a division for it. Uh, and here is kind of very quick setup how it can look like. It's like this. Uh, we can look how it looks in Unreal Engine. I uh, uploaded several examples of this chandelier. Also with my uh, main one, like original one with volumetric stuff. And uh, this one with uh, more kind of economic and po poly uh, polygons, I guess. No, not as great looking as original one, but still working. Sorry about that. I need some time. Okay. So, uh, here's our original chandelier looks like this good was close-ups not great with optimization uh, let's see uh, so here's the one uh, with atlas that we just made uh, it's important to uh, have your uh, metallic stuff not uh, fully white because uh, I tested several times and with different roughness. Uh, the more white you go, the more invisible they become. So from far away, they need to be uh, a, a bit of like, let's say, n not shiny, m much stuff, something like that. Uh, that is one option. The other option uh, why I baked uh, crystal separately. Uh, it's kind of uh, experiment, but it worked also good. I did these threads. Let's see how it's made. Um, so I'm using separate uh, thread, the one we baked here. Here it is. And we're using like uh, two polygons for crystals for each one. Uh, also, it's important that uh, you do uh, like a normal transfer for this stuff. Uh, you need to look at like same from all sides. Uh, how I did it in 3D Max was like, a, I don't know anyone using uh, 3D Max. I uh, used cylinder shape like this. And uh, I transferred normals from cylinder to this stuff. It's basically you're like making these threads also as foliage, even like cards. Sometimes for foliage we do cards. You also, it's great when it's not like exactly 90 degrees rotated from, uh, but like this, with other angle. Um, and so. I didn't make them like on a uh, chandelier itself, uh, but here it is. It looks like this. It kind of has its volume and it's not uh, heavy as my initial crystals, but still works. You just need like to uh, make them in shape of chandelier and yeah. Also no. Uh, like uh, glass stuff is used here, it's simply metallic stuff. Mm. So I guess it's all for crystals. Maybe there is like questions about crystals, so I can answer them before we move further.
Ah. Oh. Oh yeah, it's kind of <laughs> insane way of doing it. <clears throat> so it's not like particles exactly, it's uh, real geometry. Uh, yeah, it's not also optimized at all, but it's, it was kind of like a last minute idea. So I don't have time, I didn't have time for like making particles and stuff. Uh, so basically I reuse same crystals for that. And, oh, wait a second. <clears throat> same crystals that I used previously. I added a little emissive oil. Let me open my master material. Added a little emissive. Uh, also, it has like a, a little of panner on each crystal. So I, I guess you can see it a bit. So they're like kind of shimmering a bit. Uh, and here is like a setup. I uh, put it in links. I uh, like previously uh, done. Uh, you can uh, later see this. Uh, there is like a setup on YouTube video uh, where uh, it is uh, like setup for clothes, uh, waving, hanging. And I'm reusing this stuff, to be honest, almost everywhere I can reuse. So here I, I have like clothes. It's, so it's same setup for this. You just need to like uh, change some parameters. Uh, also, it's same setup for. Let me see what else. Ah, oh, here it is. Here it is. Uh, wait a second. I will post link so not to forget about it <clears throat> because it's a very useful technique, and you basically can reuse it everywhere. Initially, it was a. Uh, technique for uh, closest line shader for flex, but uh, this setup is very useful. You just need to experiment with it a bit. And yeah, S some cheats. <laughs> okay, so I guess no questions for crystals. Uh, we can move on. Uh, next one is uh, modeling ornaments. Uh, also, I'm ki kind of a lazy person, so there will be some cheats hacks how to do it faster. Maybe not as clean as you're doing, uh, well, usually, like old way of doing uh, ornaments is uh, to make uh, polygon modeling with subdivision. I mean, yeah, you will get amazing results with that, but it's kind of tedious and long pr uh, process. So I'll show you some kind of uh, uh, hacks I use in ZBrush and how I model that. Let me close this uh, and open. Is it this one? Okay. Mm. Uh, for this stuff, I decided to take a new ornament to make kind of from scratch, but to save time, I'll show you. Let's skip some steps. So, mm, I really like uh, working with splines. So if I can work with splines anywhere, I will do that. Uh, for this one, I just uh, traced shape of this part with spline. Uh, and then just transform it in ge into geometry, well, as usual, uh, do some polygon, like cutting, just to, to have a cl uh, more clear geometry before uh, transferring it to the brush. Here it is, like, final, final stuff I transfer to the brush. There it is. You can model it uh, whatever you like. You can go just with simple polygon model and you can also use splines, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. You just need uh, this shape. Also, you can uh, do this in ZBrush itself with uh, masking, for example. But uh, for me, it's usually uh, I will start uh, in 3D Max before uh, ZBrush. I don't know. It's, it's just my way of working. It's easier for me than to start from scratch in the brush. Uh, so let's move next. Oh. Mm. 
So this is kind of some experiments I did, but we will do it from scratch now. So we need to import shape once more. Here it is. And also at a second, I will bring a reference on top. Also, uh, when I will be working like on sculpting stuff, uh, I guess you can ask questions and uh, let me know if I'm uh, talking too fast or not clear enough. I will try to <laughs> fix that. <laughs> um, okay, so we have our shape brought into the brush. Here it is. Uh, what we can do is usually I'm doing some subdivision. It doesn't matter if some sh kind of shape like will be uh, deformed, doesn't matter, we can fix that later. Uh, we just need like general shape. And animation stuff, oh, this should be enough. Okay, so um, there are several ways uh, how you can uh, work with these shapes. Uh, first of all, uh, let me uh, put it here, not to close brushes. Um, uh, this process of sculpting will be heavily dependent on masking a uh, moving brush and also several brushes. Um, one that I lost where I, <laughs> I found it, I don't remember, but I found a uh, sameish brush uh, to you to have uh, for you to have. Uh, also, let me put a link immediately, not to forget it. Here it is. Mm. Uh, so the brush we are interested in is uh, SK close and SK slash. And also a lot of use uh, here, Scribble standard. It's my, uh, mostly, most brushes I use for ornaments. Uh, so uh, how we will work? Uh, let me show, uh, have I tried as experimental ways to make these ornaments? Uh, yeah, I have also, I have, let me again, send you some links. Uh, Wait a second. Um, here it is. Uh, this guy is amazing doing ornaments. Uh, his way of doing it is much cleaner than mine, uh, but I think it's, uh, let's say it like that, for uh, some kind of hero props or like very important props that can be uh, closely looked at. It's for sure an amazing tutorial, uh, but it's a bit complicated, maybe uh, longer than my way. But for some kind of uh, ornament that will be stuck somewhere on back or I don't know, maybe. Never mind that if they are not as great as your hero prop ornament. Okay, let's start. We'll be talking too long. Uh, so first of all, uh, while doing ornaments, usually put lazy mouse uh, uh, and some radius of feet, I guess will be fine. Uh, so right now I will be showing how a uh, scribble standard brush works. It's uh, basically stuff also on splines. <coughs> works like this. Uh, you're drawing and you're having such a uh, clean shape also you can use it uh, backwards uh, when holding out something like this uh, beside uh, bef besides that like here uh, doing like spline shape clicking uh, here removing spline like here uh, but uh, most time I use uh, brushes that work like this. Uh, here it is. Uh, so inside, outside. What's important uh, 
how to uh, achieve cleaner shapes. For example, uh, let's start from here. I'm doing it like this. The second need. Uh, Yeah, more like this uh, for example you're going with this shape if you're doing uh like cutting inside uh, near this shape there you go you kind of clothing clean shape like this so you're doing like uh for example uh putting it forward in inside and uh, from sides clone this shape it's easier, easier to show it like on here for example like this uh, so what we'll be doing uh, first of all we will start from working from uh, big shapes and for that, I will be using mask lasso. Uh, we need to like put some shapes uh, forward, kind of like, and uh, back like, because you, you see here it's like going on back, this stuff going forward a bit, this stuff also like have different uh, heights. Uh, so for mask class, I also use lazy mask. We have mask for making it like more uh, bluish. You need to click uh, control. Or for making it more like crisp, uh, you click control alt also clicking on mask. Uh, usually uh, these shapes are not like going. Um, let's show me. Uh, not like this. They have like uh, more organic flow. So for that we'll be taking like move brush. And do it like this. For example, this shape going backwards, this stays same. Not perfect shape here, but never mind, we'll fix it later, probably. Uh, also, it's like a fine time to ask questions if there is any, uh, because I mostly will be doing some kind of bo boring moving stuff. Are there any other brushes you might recommend for Namoto Sculpton? Uh, well, kind of it's like about uh, moving stuff forward, move, moving stuff back. Uh, I mean, a uh, pinch brush is very important here. Uh, I guess we can use orb cracks, but I tried not to worry. Like, it doesn't work like the way I wanted it to. Uh, but unfortunately, I can't remember where I got these brushes maybe you remember maybe someone in chat will remember g uh, j a uh, j a c cut a j c cut b because i didn't find it anywhere in my library but these brushes are to be to be honest the most amazing brushes for that uh they have like a bit too much sorry uh they have more Sometimes you need to play a bit with intensity size because because it can be too much sometimes. No, wait a second. What to do with this one? Yeah. So it's basically uh, it's great for bigger shapes. You are going like this, for example. And then you 
kind of cut it here. Something like this. So this brush for sure. But I think this is like a, all brushes I use, so I'm not sure if I can recommend anything else. Scribble standard is amazing, but uh, mm, it sometimes can be hard to work with splines. Oh, for example, uh, I'm not a fan of splines inside this brush. Uh, but if you are good with it, and uh, for example, the tutorial that I sent uh, above, it's also using a lot of splines. Have you ever tried building ornamental shapes from an alpha or height map? Uh, yeah, I tried. Uh, I uh, used uh, not not separate like stuff like this that has like its own shape volume, uh, but I did a height extrusion for, for example, um, scrolls. I just uh, extract alpha uh, on previously on uh, UV uh, asset. I can show later uh, how it's done. <clears throat> uh, but for this stuff, no, I'm sculpted like separate pieces. For my environment, I wanted it to be uh, also has a volume uh, and nice shape. I guess you can uh, use it for trims, but not sure how to use it for such stuff with, with weight and with shape. So basically process like this and yeah, it takes some time to achieve result that you want. Uh, all lines should be flowing like, so all shapes should be flowing organically. Some shapes right now kind of messed up, but it can be fixed like it was moving around. And also a lot of like depends on uh, how good your initial shape will be. Because here you see it's not perfect also and oh, it is. longer lines are harder <laughs> to move. Well, I probably won't be finishing this like right now for sure because it will take a lot of time uh, i will show you how for example my final scones look like because i used a uh, same technique uh, for this scones how much effort do you usually put into sculpting smaller parts do you try to pull this to the same level as larger ornaments models um actually no uh i am uh, putting less effort of course uh, into smaller parts uh they won't be visible mm. in, a, in ideal world i guess you need like uh if you're planning for example to make a lot of such environments uh how i approached it uh in starlet manor uh i made uh some kind of set like small parts uh of course, not like sculpt every small part, but it was like four or five, five, I think. And then I'm just reusing them all around. I'm bending them. I'm putting them, for example, on chandelier. I use like uh, one or two flower branches like this and just uh, continuing to uh, put them like uh, rotating, uh, mirroring them. So to have a new shape. It's very complicated uh, if you want like to uh, do everything unique. You need to, of course, reuse same assets.
So in general, if you're planning, for example, uh, to make a baked trim, you do several parts and then just reuse them. Again, I think like it's crazy uh, for environment art. Uh, I mean, environment art, not like props or something. Uh, Props that will be looked from far away, from third person, from first person view, some chandelier streams, uh, to have crazy amount of details. So well, basically something like this. Uh, of course I'm not finishing it current right now because it will take more time. Uh, but in general after you uh, made it you can do some experiments with it like rotating, doing some new shapes, scaling stuff. And like getting more complicated shapes. Like this. Mm. <laughs> Here is a, I use same technique for my wall lamp. Uh, Wait a second, I guess it's not like final one. Yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. uh, so shapes were also uh, some of this uh, with like uh, bending. It was like a uh, simple polygon modeling in 3D Max also. And later brought to the brush and doing shapes like this. Also, I did that like uh, made detail work on back. I tried a bit, but then I remember that it will be on the wall and no one will see it except for you. So yeah, I guess it's all about ornaments. Maybe do you have some questions about that or we can move on to the next chapter. So books. Uh, here is the books I made for the project. Uh, so uh, there is almost no high poly for them. I mean, there is like simple with uh, some chamfers from 3D Max itself, but uh, there is no like uh, ZBrush sculpt or anything. Um, for the books, my idea was that they for sure need to be like to have colors based on world position and uh, to uh, have ornaments and stuff uh, kept out from uh, coloring on world position so how it's made mm. for books uh, i uh, looked for references uh, mostly for some kind of vintage covers uh doesn't matter what books are about i just needed these shapes uh to to be like visible to clear to be clear uh for me to make alpha out of them so for example this one something like this Mm, this one. Uh, well, the process of making alpha is very simple. I just uh, put it at, like in Photoshop, grayscale. Uh, I'm not sure if I need to show it because I think it's not very interesting. But let's go straight to Substance Painter. Uh, 
so I have uh, two sets of books. Uh, they have sa same UVs, uh, both sets, uh, but they have uh, different ornaments on them. Here it is. Uh, Mm, texture is, is also here pretty straightforward. Uh, I just used a uh, very simple fill layer, some uh, leather-like normals uh, for books here. Basic uh, grayish, whitish color, because we need to put uh, multiply color later in Unreal Engine. A bit of damage, a bit of normals for uh, leather. And uh, the main point is uh, to make these ornaments to look like kind of have volume uh, inflated on edges. So how it's made? Uh, I used alphas. Let me hope it's here. Here it is. Yeah. So alphas look like this. They are uh, previously made in Photoshop. Uh, and what we are making, uh, we are uh, having this layer um, to have height and a bit of ambient occlusion just for visibility because <clears throat> it won't be uh, very uh, visible only if we have it on normal. And gold ornament itself. So basically, I was uh, let's make it a new layer. Uh, so we have clear view. Um, adding some masking and adding paint layer. Uh, I prefer working on separate paint layers. Usually, just stack them uh, one on each other. Uh, I mean, it's e just easier for me to work like that. Uh, next, here uh, I'm using projection and putting one of my alphas here. Then just uh, doing like necessary scale for that. I will do it like this. To turn off under layers. Mm, well, and I just repeat this step with like sides. I had some projection on sides uh, with uh, I found like a uh, Fonts, for example, I wanted to use some random books that I use, like I just uh, cut this stuff and made a uh, decal for that. And you just like set up this as you want, uh, for example, if you want like something goldish stuff. Let's set up it like this. Like this, for example, uh, height in minus position, uh, and you do what you do. So you like set up your material as you want. Just as an example, uh, for inflating this stuff here, for example, uh, I used like I painted this stuff and just blew them on top, and this uh, bluish like gives you kind of this look. Uh, so yeah, and um, also, of course, we need a mask uh, that will uh, cut out stuff that won't be recolored in Unreal Engine. So for me, uh, it it's like a mask here. I mean, uh, you can set up mask as you want. Uh, you can use like extra channels, uh, as you know. Here, you can add your own channels. For example, user channels. Uh, and later, when you 
uh, export textures here it is uh, you can add your own channels or uh, let me make a new one for example uh, and put your uh, user channels that you created then to work you need uh, here for example turn on turn on them here so uh, like substance painter will understand that you're using this channel uh, but for me it was just easier to make emissive because well I, I don't use emissive here in books of course but uh, it's already uh, prepared uh, has like a setup so and it's uh, easier to see it here so yeah white is stuff that won't be recolored later okay going again to Unreal Engine So here's uh, all my books. Uh, final textures look like this. Uh, just base color. And on alpha I have like emissive, uh, well kinda emissive, we will use it as a mask later, for uh, separating colored and non-colored uh, parts of book. Uh, Second, I, I will close Substance Painter. So here it is. Uh, all people uh, make like setup for uh, a color wall position like differently. Mine is uh, very very simple. Here it is. And we have gradient scale. Well, I called it that way. It just uh, will scale your uh, gradient. Let me show and demonstrate you how it works. So basic like uh, default value we have like three, but if we scale it, like for example, in some big numbers like 1000 for example uh, here you see it uh, make gradient like kind of more even and coloring books more even so uh, it's something we don't want but uh, it's something that works like that so setup uh, let's see also uh, pretty straightforward uh, our basic maps, maps like ambient occlusion, roughness, metallic. Here it is. Uh, normal. Also, I did here some kind of metal multiplier uh, because I didn't like final colors uh, on the metal and uh, I didn't want to remake textures in substance painter. So it was easier just to do this here. Uh, basic color so we have in like our gradient calling it rainbow for example uh, it uh, adds as multiply on our basic color here it is and later we are lerping between our basic color and uh, our like rainbow color like based on roll position through our alpha that we made as you remember, we made it for have like non-colored parts, like uh, paper sides, uh, uh, bookmarks and stuff like that. Here it is. Also inverting this stuff. And uh, here also I made um, paper, paper multiply color because I didn't like the final look of paper. I needed it to be darker. Initially it was too light. So I did like uh, again multiply based on alpha for making our paper a bit darker. Here it is also learning from it. And yeah, here it is. So and we have books 
that look like this. So our gold parts are uh, intact and and colors just changing. Okay, mm. that's I guess all about books. Let me know if you have any questions about them or we can proceed further. Okay, no questions, I guess. Okay, uh, let's proceed to our next step. Uh, ceiling textures, painting textures. Um, let's probably start from ceiling textures. <coughs> it's a very kind of easy made material. Nothing insane. Uh, so for this, as you remember, I wanted to make like day and night sky. Basically, it's kind of a uh, sky trim. It's also uh, UV in a stream on ceiling and on around part here. Here it is. So just stream. Uh, so how it's made. Mm. Uh, for this one, I took a uh, simple alphas of clouds uh, some of them are like are cut it by myself uh, some of them are from uh, already ready uh, already pre-made uh, and I put it some links uh, in uh, list of my links uh, also you can find that clouds there uh, so we are having simple alphas for clouds here it is and we are having simple tile sampler so basically how it's made, uh, for tile sampler I needed to be like uh, black on the inside, in inner part and have uh, clouds uh, on the sides. So for that I'm using a simple gradient for mask map input and pattern distribution map input. Uh, how it helps? First of all let me... So basically, here is where we control mask. How much clouds do we need based on the gradient? Uh, and here you can look how it uh, set up. Just putting our uh, images as in inputs here doing some randomization like scaling, a bit of position of setting everything as usual and uh, here check if uh, blending mode is on max for sh uh, and yeah here it is for a bit of um, kind of paintish like look I can say it's like a uh, paintish or something but I need it to be uh, more more random and not look like a photo I just uh, blurred my uh, tile sample result and put it through slow blue gray scale it's one of my favorite notes uh it uh, has very different like random uh, results when you put different gray scales into slope you just need to experiment with it a bit uh but uh, results can be very cool uh and so what else after that i need to do uh, some coloring simple coloring through gradient map uh Took a bit time to understand how I wanted to look as finished result. I needed to be again not look as a uh, photo because it was too much white. You also, uh, if, if not sure, you can uh, experiment a bit with second uh, here with color random uh, because when it's like on zero, it it will be too white, like super white. I put it like on maximum here and I uh, got a lot of color variations. 
So here is like setup for color mm, for uh, for like a texture like of paint or something. Here it is. Also very simple, uh, super simple. Uh, some uh, blends between different granges. It's a uh, mostly case of just experimenting with style. How do you want it to look? Again, my favorite note, slow blue gray scale, some clouds, directional warp here. Also, as a final touch, I blended it here again with our clouds. I just wanted roughness to be uh, like to be separate, like inside uh, part of clear sky. Those clouds have a different roughness. And also, I put a bit of clouds also on normal. Here, how it looks, final normal. And it's pretty much it, very simple. I think uh, you need uh, not to be afraid uh, to use uh, inputs, images, inputs in Substance Designer, because a lot of people like uh, want everything to be procedural, but sometimes uh, I mean, you can kind of make this uh, clouds and substance designer, but it's just a matter of time, saving your time and making everything faster. And just fast uh, showing how night stuff looks like. I really like how colors ended here. And just... And for fun, I added a bit of stars simple style sampler again uh, but it has like roughness uh, roughness on black so when you're like uh, here we should you can see how it shines a bit Uh, so yeah, uh, it's like about the clouds. Like if there is any questions about clouds, clouds, not sure if there is any, let me know. Uh, also, fast showing, oh, fast because this stuff is made based on tutorial that I will be sharing. Uh, here it is. So it's uh, nothing super amazing from my side. I just uh, made uh, this stuff like back on, uh, I think, 2020 in November. Uh, I was doing like, uh, let me show you. Here it is. And for that year, November, I made based on this tutorial for practice, these small paintings. So uh, luckily I had uh, stuff saved and I'm just reusing it here. I won't be going like uh, too much around it because it's like a repeating of tutorial. Uh, but the main idea is that I, all I need for making different painting variations, just put uh, some kind of image input here and to have different final results here. Mostly I was putting uh, paintings of uh, landscape, some portraits of astrology, astrologians and stuff. Uh, made diff uh, several variations for that. Let me show you how it looks in Unreal Engine. Here it is. I don't know how how to explain it, but I'm not a fan. Maybe I can say that uh, when uh, everything is super clear in the environment, these paintings uh, like is made to be kind of questioned. Like you don't know what exactly is happening here, but you know there is like something, some oil painting. Not sure what oil painting. Here it is. Also, other stuff. So yeah, it's like painting some made. 
Okay. If there is any question again, I'm not sure if there is any. Uh, um, now going maybe to most fun part of environment art. Well, for me, I mean, uh, it's like lighting. There were a question how I approach lighting. So I did some like bullet points and uh, after that we can go through my environment i can show you like in details uh so for me um, i think uh lighting should uh, tell some story and uh, uh i myself uh, more leaning to more colorful lighting uh not like dark grim but uh, i don't know maybe cheerful a bit uh I myself try to limit myself with one, two colors, well, not one, but maybe like, like two, three maximum uh, colors of light. Uh, for me, it's just easier to work with it. Uh, I'm not myself like a lighting artist. I'm not an expert on that. But uh, one, two colors like help uh, kind of bring all environment together. Uh, because when you have a lot of colors, you are risking to break your environment in parts so the person uh, won't know where to look at uh, also for my environment also always using like air perspective rule what i mean that everything on back uh, usually it's uh, like for landscapes is leaning to more uh, colder colors because a background is uh, mixing with sky color uh, it uh, it of course like uh, for for example blue sky i mean if you're doing some kind of crazy environment with red sky it won't be like uh, another talk but in general like our usual environments uh, classical ones uh, we are leaning towards uh, colder colors on back also less situated less contrasted what helps us uh, in that case is using fog actively in our environments Light also helps separate space. Light uh, helps a lot uh, to, you can force player viewer to look where you want them to look. Or light helps to kind of guide uh, player uh, where he or she should go, uh, where like uh, he need to uh, check out. For example, maybe there is like a chest behind something. It just uh, like guiding you. Uh, you need to start lighting your scene like as early as you can like on the stage of blockout and it's better if you like lighting on the blockout stage it won't be like a default one but uh, kind of you need to understand on this stage even on blockout what final lighting you want to have in this environment so that's why for sure uh, use reference you need to understand what is your final goal in terms of light you need to understand what time of day it is, what air condition in that area. It can be polluted, for example, or it can be like very clear air. You need to understand what weather it is and uh, what uh, light do you use. Like it's like some kind of ele electric, for example, lamps, neon lamps, or it's like candles with warm light. Also, when it's like close to your final stage, like you're uh, adding props, uh, start thinking on like. Uh, showing your props in like pun intended in their best light so uh yeah it's uh probably my main rules i use when i'm doing lighting of my environment uh about lighting let me show you here it is uh so as i have already told uh, idea was to separate uh, parts of environment like warm let me make it like full, full screen uh, warm corridor and a very cold moon color uh, back but it doesn't mean that we don't use warm colors there we uh, use a bit but just as accents to uh, like show our status in their best look uh, some of rules I also use is always uh, frame with light your environment. Here is my main shot and I use like black frame so there is almost no light. 
I say almost because there is a bit light because without any light it will be like pitch black. Uh, so a bit light here and there. Uh, but mostly this frame uh, helps us to uh, show front, middle ground and background. Uh, just for the experiment, uh, like so some people say that uh, like if something bad, just add rim light and everything will be good. Well, I also use this rule. So uh, if I can, I like uh, adding rim light here on columns. Let me show you like this. Um, yeah. Also, I just wanted to say that light is not optimized here at all. So, yeah. Uh, here for rim light, I'm using a big plane to uh, give this column a nice touch here. And same for this side. Oh, thanks to that, the columns really pop out and you like have this frame. Uh, besides that, as uh, I have already told, uh, you use light to guide player. Uh, candles, for example, here, here and here, they I put them like kind of like this line. Mm. So uh, your uh, eye won't look like on every candles that will be like uh, bright lit here, 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 it will be too much. But we are just kind of uh, moving our eyes on this light and uh, looking only on stuff that like author want us to show. Uh, here I did some small folk cards uh, why I did that, I needed to separate here background from these books. So thanks to that, uh, here you see, we have clear shape of this arch and it's like m more interesting. If I won't put a uh, fox, fox here, it will be blending together too much. But thanks to this fox, it's like popping a bit. Uh, also here for example uh, most light is just a uh, imitation of uh, real world lights almost everything is uh, lighted here with spotlights even moon is also a, simulator, a simulation by spotlight here like this uh lamp here is lighted with warm from front it kind of feels like we have uh, so much warm light here that it even like uh, lays down on a uh, lamp also uh, without warm color this lamp uh, doesn't look like goldish at all here for example you see a uh, bluish color on gold gives you very dark uh, colors so if you want your goal to pop up, you need to light it up for sure. Mm. So yeah, uh, also I can show you how my light uh, looked at early stages. Let me find it. So here, for example, is one of my first uh, blockouts drafts for this environment. Uh, well, idea of light was kind of there, but not exactly. It something renders how it looked in the middle. So yeah, let me know if there is any questions about light. Don't know what else to add. Uh, well, for candles, for example, 
are here. Uh, I'm using light function for uh, like shimmering light. It adds like life into your environment. Because without that, everything will be super static. So yeah, let me know if there's questions about light. Could you also animate the candles with the world position orient? Oh, you mean like a, a, a emissive for, for the flame? Oh yeah, it, it's made like that, yeah. To, to be honest, I don't remember. I think I took these flames from uh, Unreal Goddess Temple. It's already there. So you just, if you want, you can switch uh, emissive alphas for the flame, but uh, set up is there already. So yeah, it works like that. Uh, okay, let's move on. Oh, finally, G general Q and day. <clears throat> well, if there is no questions about Starlight Manor, we can move closer. Thank you so much, Anastasia, for taking the time to share this amazing workshop with us. Head on down to the description to check out their awesome work. We also want to thank all of our Patreon supporters for making these workshops and their awesome community possible. If you're not a part of it, the best way to support us is to subscribe, like, and share these workshops if you found them helpful, because this makes a massive difference. Lastly, to help you in your environment art journey, we also have a bunch more other resources on our website, beyondexcent.com, where you can get instant access to our community as well. Stay creative, and we'll see you there.